Hello, welcome to Scott Plays and first in a new series of videos that I am calling Topic of the Week. In this series I will be posting a discussion topic to the Facebook group uh, each Sunday and then at the end of the week I will discuss the responses I've got and my thoughts on that topic. So, last weekend I posted um, about Kickstarter exclusives, asking do people like them or hate them, um, does it matter whether they're functional or aesthetic exclusives, um, should they be time limited and whether they uh, make people back or avoid a campaign. Um, and I got a few responses. Uh, Rich said, I'd like them better if they were strictly exclusive and not sold or given away at cons. Ronald um, said, how I hate Kickstarter exclusives. It is like being punished for not having enough money or finding a game late. Simon is one of the worst companies for this and at an average Kickstarter price crawling up to $125, screw you and your Kickstarter exclusives. Thanks for selling me half a game. And finally, Timo uh, said, like Ronald said, I like it when you get some alternative art box, cards, etc. as exclusives, or you get an add-on for free as a backer, but when I see the differences between a Kickstarter and its retail and half is missing, I don't buy the game in retail then. And I can certainly see their point of view. Um, for me, I sort of sit halfway between the um, thoughts being expressed there and um, another school of thought that I've seen expressed elsewhere, which is basically Kickstarters are fantastic and they make people back Kickstarters and they really like them and it doesn't matter whether it's purely aesthetic or it's gameplay, they'll back a, a project just for the exclusives. And yeah, as I said, I sort of sit somewhere in between. I am not a fan of gameplay exclusives, uh, particularly if they are not available later. Um, unlike Rich, I'm not... I, I would prefer that exclusives are time limited. So you get them in the Kickstarter and then maybe a year later they are available through the publisher's website or uh, something like that. Um, and especially if they are gameplay exclusives. For aesthetic exclusives, I'm not so fussed. Um, I do, you know, like uh, alternate art boxes or box sleeves or um, upgraded components that you only get through Kickstarter, that kind of thing, then they are nice. Um, however, even with those, I think it's really nice if a publisher makes them available later. Uh, they don't, for me, sway whether I will back a Kickstarter or not. Um, personally, uh, gameplay and the mechanics and whether it's a good game is far more important than any kind of exclusives or or even just aesthetics in general um, so yeah don't mind them um, actually I do mind them when they push the price up and it was one of the things uh, Ron and Timo said that, uh, particularly Ron, he talked about the $125 uh, price of an average Simon 
game and uh, from what I've seen lately they, they seem to be going even higher than that uh, and yeah it's there, there seems to be a push towards certain companies using Kickstarter as a as a way to generate a lot of income. I mean, yes, they give backers a lot of stuff for what they're paying, but I wonder, you know, how many of those backers actually use even a small fraction of what they actually get. Um, I backed the first three Zombicide um, Kickstarters and I'm in the process of selling all of that stuff. It got to the point where, you know, and I, I went all in on those. Um, so I, I had everything, all the Kickstarter exclusives. Um, I bought all the add-ons and yeah, it got to the point where there was so much stuff, I was never going to use any of it. Um, and yeah, most of it just didn't get played. And I have ended up selling all of the base games, all of the um, expansions, uh, I started getting rid of the all the exclusive stuff. A lot of that is already gone, um, and the the add-ons again they're all getting sold. Um, partly because it just didn't get played, and I, I had all this stuff taking up tons of space on my shelves. It really wasn't getting played enough to justify me keeping it. Um, there were a number of other factors that have caused me to want to sell it. Uh, but yeah, it's I, I look at a lot of Kickstarters now and it, it's like they're producing content purely to sell the content and it's not really adding any real value to the game. It's just more stuff. And yeah, as both Ron and Timo say, when you then look at what you get in retail compared to what you get in Kickstarter, it's like retail is half a game. Um, now, in most cases, the retail version is a complete game, but you can't help but compare that to the Kickstarter version and think, you know, I, I'm not getting anywhere near um, what the Kickstarter back has got. Um, and call me or not, especially with their their move towards things like the, in the, um, uh, I can't remember what the game was, but the, the one that had the, the huge Cthulhu mini that was uh, a both an aesthetic and gameplay exclusive and you know I didn't keep up with what actually happened in the end with that but I'm pretty certain the mini itself not that you can call it really a mini because it's like the size of a toddler uh, that's not going to retail I don't know if they are doing a sort of version of the um, scenario that went with that for retail um, but certainly during the beginning of the campaign it was if you want this scenario which ends the campaign you need to back on Kickstarter and get this mini and pay however much extra that you were paying for it and it's, it's that kind of thing that's just I, I can understand why companies do it. It makes a, a lot of sense 
from a business point of view. And yet there are people that love that stuff. For me, yeah, no, it's it's not something I I want to get involved with um, anymore. Um, as I said, I did buy into Zombicide. Uh, it would be wrong to say I regret doing that. We got a lot of fun out of playing Zombicide. I still think it's a good game. It's... Yeah, it's it's the whole... It's just stuff <laughs> that you're paying for. And it's not... It's not really adding enough value. And when you then make it exclusive to the Kickstarter, it does... It feels a bit manipulative to me. Um, so, yeah... On balance, I think some Kickstarter exclusives are okay. If they're purely aesthetic, then yeah, absolutely fine. No problem with that. Once you start getting into gameplay exclusives, then I would like to see those things being time limited. So Kickstarter backers get them early and then some time later, maybe a year later, even six months later, they become available to everybody. Anything beyond that, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I wouldn't say it stops me from backing a campaign, but it will make me think twice. And if I don't back it, then I'm almost certainly not buying it at retail. Um, yeah, especially if it's like gameplay exclusives because you are getting less of a game and I don't like that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, as I said, I will be doing this weekly. Um, I will be putting up a new topic uh, to the Facebook group uh, after I've finished recording this. Um, I will put a link to the Facebook group in the description uh, so please come and join the group um, and get involved with uh, the future discussions thank you again and hope to see you on another video soon mm -hmm.